So I was driving to church this morning and uh, I just had a, a melody kind of going in my head. And then a couple of little words just kind of started pouring out of my mouth. And that hadn't happened in a long time, but that's what used to happen a lot, a lot more frequently when I wrote music a long time ago. So this morning when it was happening, I was like, okay, so I came in and I grabbed my guitar and I just started playing and this is kind of what came out this morning. So it's very short <laughs> because I wrote it in about 15 minutes or so and uh, it's it's just about us in need of a savior. That's just basically what it's about. And um, so I don't share it with you as, hey, look what I wrote this morning. I share it with you this morning as perhaps God put it on my heart to share with somebody out there that might need to hear it because he's the one that gave it to me this morning. I was just the vessel. I want to make that very clear, okay? So here we go. Can you hear it out there, Zillow? Will I fall to my knees? And I'm asking, Lord, please hear me. I'm just a man who's in need. Children of God, and what we will be 
has not yet been made known. But we will know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. All who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Greg, thank you for that song. I appreciate you very much listening to your creative senses. Let us pray. Ever equipping God as I speak, may you increase and I decrease. May the word you have given me for this message have seeds that rest in our hearts, that we may be a changed people that we may bear fruit for you here on earth. Now speak boldly and courageously what you've given me to speak, and may we as your people have ears that hear. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, since Greg said he had a song come to mind while he was on his way to work, let me just share with you I had a song come to mind while I was on my way to work. So I'm driving down the road, and I'm thinking, okay, God, how do I introduce this sermon? And God said, do it like this, and you're all welcome to participate. M-I-C, C in a little while, K-E-Y, why? Because we like you. M-O-U-S-C. Y'all want to do that one more time? It makes you feel good to do that? Let's do that one more time. M-I-C, C in a little while, K-E-Y, why? Because we like you. M-O-U-S-C. Mickey Mouse. I can go on. <laughs> All the glory days. Did you ever watch that as a kid? I know some of you were very active kids at that time, and some of us watched it in our older childhood when it was reruns. But it was the Mickey Mouse Club. And who didn't like Jimmy and Darlene and Chubby and Bobby and Sharon and all of the all of the Mouseketeers? In fact, I'm going to bet that some of you had a little black hat that had black ears on. <laughs> Did any of you order your Mouseketeer hat? Some of you probably still have a Mouseketeer hat. <laughs> I remember sitting with my twin brother and my two sisters, and we would watch the Mickey Mouse Club. And oh, we wanted to be. Mouseketeers. Anybody else want to be a Mouseketeer when you were growing up? We wanted to be Mouseketeers. And I ran around singing that song, in my seat, K-E-Y-N-O-U-C, right? And my mom, she had her handful anyway. But we would do that, and it would just put us in the best mood. Why is it we long for yesteryear? I mean, just up here doing that, I kind of feel good. And we long for those good days. Wasn't life good back in 1955 and 1958 when that series ran on TV? Did you know it was that long ago? Wasn't life good? Don't we long for the yesteryears? In fact, we long for yesteryears so much that on certain Sundays of the year, we celebrate the lives of the saints who passed because we don't want to forget them. We don't want to forget the memories of yesteryear. We want to Hold on to those memories. We're gonna hold on to who that person was. You know, they say that the worst day in a person's life is the last day that someone ever says their name. Think about it. That's when your life is over. The last time anybody ever utters your name, your life is over. That's fine. And we don't want to get there, right? I mean, we're kind of afraid of that point. Are you afraid of that point in your life? That nobody will remember you? Nobody will remember my antics up here on, on the chancellery? Nobody will remember the word of God that God put through us? Nobody will remember our fellowship together? Nobody will remember the funny times we've had, the good times we've had, the meals we've shared, all those things, and all of a sudden they don't speak your name anymore? What if we did Jesus that way? We're called to be in love with Jesus and fall in love with Jesus. But how many of us sing a song? J-E-S, J-E-S, J-E-S-U-S, he knows us. Right? We don't sing that. 
B-I-B-L-E, that's the book for me, right? We sing that, but it's kind of bygone too. It's old school. What do we do in our lives that reminds us of Jesus? Who is it we really want to be? Do we want to be that good, wholesome person of 1958 that sang with the Mickey Mouse Mouseketeers? That actually got to go on the program and be a part of the program? Is that who we want to be? Is that who we're shaping ourselves to be? Or are we following a Christ who was crucified and rose from the dead and ask us to sacrifice ourselves? How many of us are willing to do that? Do we say Jesus happily? Do we, do we want to be who God wants us to be happily? Or is it a burden for us? I gotta get up in the morning, I gotta say my prayers, gotta read my Bible, gotta read my devotional. Check, check, check. Right? And then we get to go and have the fun stuff. Then we get to go play in life and do whatever it is we want to do in life because we checked everything off our list. But the bottom line is, it's not about what we want to be. It's about who God wants us to be. Did you hear the text today? God doesn't care if we're Mouseketeers. God doesn't care if we know the Mickey Mouse song. God doesn't care if we know the Bible song. God, God really doesn't care if we know all the books of the Bible. What God cares about is loving us like children of God. What's more important, being a Mouseketeer or a child of God? Which title puts more weight in your life? President? Chairman? Elder? Child of God. What's the most important title you can have in your life? Mother, father, husband, wife, friend, brother, sister, <coughs> child of God. Does child of God rank up there emotionally when we say all those other names? When we say all those other titles, all those other things that we want to be? God wants us to be God's children. And the only way we can do that is to profess our faith. We believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. And we believe that he was crucified and died and rose again on the third day. And is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he intercedes for us. I mean, that's what we believe in the Messiah if we're to be Christian. And if we'll do that, God calls us child of God. Because what that does is that opens an avenue in our life. Where we can communicate with God. It's one thing to say we're Christian and carry the name. It's another thing that our actions reflect being children of God. I, I love watching the Mickey Mouse Club except that it set these parameters. It was kind of like um, they set unrealistic parameters. Because they expected children who watched them to be good. And you know how old, old most of us were when we watched that show? We weren't good. Right? I mean, there was probably some who were good. But there, the rest of us, we really weren't that good. We got in trouble all the time. We were ornery kids. We, right? We played. We picked on each other. We did all that stuff. And then you listen to the Mickey Mouse Club, and Mom and Dad hope you heard about how good you were supposed to be. Kind of like watching Sesame Street. And all those things that they want you to be good. Well, we have a relationship with God, and what happens when some of us push back? Because you know what? God wants us to be good. God really wants us to be like Jesus. God wants us to walk in this world. And I love this prayer of Jonathan Edwards. His prayer is this every day. His prayer is this every day. Oh God, stamp the image of eternity on my eyeballs. Think about that. If you look at the world through eyeballs that are focused on eternity instead of on yourself, what kind of life are you going to live? You're going to live a life that reflects Jesus. You're going to live a life that has its core values of loving other people, of being hospitable to other people, of living, lifting people up, of helping people who are in crisis. You're going to be a person who reflects the Spirit of God. If your eyeballs, as Jonathan Edwards says, are stamped with the image of eternity, what a daily prayer to say. Instead of getting up every day and saying, I'm going to make this the best day I can make for me. We get up and say, oh God, stand my eyeballs with the image of eternity. Let me see what eternity looks like. And how can I help 
Your kingdom come on where? Earth as it is where? In heaven. It, don't we pray that every Sunday? He sang about it this week, which I thought was kind of cool. He sang about it this week. God wants us to be children of God so that God's kingdom can come to fruition on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus taught us to pray that way. Be the child of God that God's calling you to be. Give your life over, and there's more than plenty. God wants to love you. God, God says, you are my child. How can you have a bad day? How can you have a bad day when the creator of all eternity, the creator of all the earth, the creator of every human being who ever walked the earth, the creator of every situation, says to you directly, you are my child. <clears throat> Stamp the image of eternity on my eyeballs, oh God. Remind me that I am your child. I am loved by you, every one of you. I don't care what situation you're in. You claim Jesus is the Christ. God says you're my child. How much better does it get in your life? I don't know if you're facing, facing financial woes. I don't know if you're facing marital problems. I don't transition. I don't know what you're facing. But I can tell you this. You're God's child. And the most important thing in your life is that you're God's child. And if God loves you like a child, God's not going to take God's hand off of you. Isn't that great? You have holy provision in your life. You have holy guidance in your life. You have holy protection in your life. You have a God you can go to no matter what's wrong in your life. And you can get on your knees and you say, hey, God, I messed it up. And God will never desert you. Isn't that wonderful? Couldn't it be any better than that? It can't. It doesn't get any better than that. Hear this. Martin Luther once said, God doesn't love us. Because we are valuable. We are valuable because God loves us. Get it? God doesn't love us because we bring the value to the table. That was done by his son. But we get our value because the creator of all the universe loves us. If you can't pick your head up and walk through a day and smile, knowing that you are a child of God and the image of God walks with you, Walks within you and surrounds you wherever you go. Something's wrong. You need to get on your knees and reconnect with the God who created you. You need to have a little talk with Jesus, as they say. And come to Jesus, maybe. And get your eyes focused on the image of eternity. Stamped on your eyeballs. So that you can be who it is God is creating you to be. We don't know what we will become. Okay? We don't know what we will become once we pass from this earth. Can you tell me what any of those people are like now? Do you know what they look like? Do you know what Ronnie Nutt looks like now? Or Wilma Halsey? I can imagine what her banana pudding tastes like. Because it was heavenly while it was here on earth, so now that she's in the heavens, only God knows. She changed the feast at the table, I can promise you. She got them all in line, too. But what does she look like? What has she become? What has her spirit become? Does banana pudding even matter to Wilma Halsey anymore? Does connecting people even matter to Ronnie Nunn anymore? What matters is they're in the presence of the Holy One, and the Holy One is able to finish His work in them in completion since they're in eternity. But the message for us is, is that we're being transformed while we walk with God on earth. Did you know that? Paul says that in 2 Corinthians 3.18. He says we are being transformed into the likeness of Jesus as we walk upon this earth. Oh, I'm not a very good Christian. I don't do all this, 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 and this. But you give your life to God. And God transforms you. You may not think so, but God is taking you and changing you. Changing you to a person that understands what deep value is. When you were little, you put value in knowing the musketeers. How many of you girls want to know Jimmy? Uh, maybe Chubby was more your type. Right? And then there was Darlene. Whew. And Sharon. Whew. I mean, every little boy, no wonder they watched that show. Right? And we looked at those people and we idolized who they were and we wanted to become like them. Now they're just a fond memory. They're just a fond They don't mean anything to us. What it means to us now is our value of life. I mean, we don't know how many days we have left, do we? 
So why don't we take on the image of God who says we're his child and love others? I don't want to know when the next time I see you will be. I may not see you after today. So why not love you? Why not love you like God loves you? Can't we accept that role? Can't we accept the role that Jesus did when he walked with the people and elevated the people? He knew what was coming. He knew his time. We don't know our time. What we do know is that we are loved by a God who calls us their child. A God who says, you are my child. And Christ sits next to him, and the Holy Spirit empowers us. And God works through us. How much better does that get? Who cares about all the things you're involved in? God puts you involved in those places so that you can love others. And you can lead others to being called children of God. Did you know that's your sole purpose on earth? Your sole purpose is not to become a musketeer. It's to become a disciple of Christ. So that others might know him. And you are the vessel, child of God, to carry on the work of the Father so that the rest of the world may know. That's your job. That's your purpose, not your job. That's your purpose on life. Let others know who Jesus Christ is so they too can become one with the Father. Well, how do I do that? How do I do that? How did you learn that song? I mean, how many years has it been since you heard the Mickey Mouse song? Some of you, it's been quite a few years. Some of us, it's been quite a few years. But you know what? Bam, just like that, we had it, right? M-I-C, see you a little while. K-E-Y, why? Because we like you. M-O-U-S-C. And see, it still makes your heart flutter, doesn't it, when you sing that song? So if I asked you what 1 John 2, 6 says, what would you say about that? You want to sing that song? Do you know what it says? It says if we believe in him, we should walk like him. It says if we believe in Jesus, we should act like Jesus. That's very paraphrased, but that's what it says. You see, what's wrong is we spend too much time in the world instead of spending so much time with God. We can talk about the things in the world because that's comfortable. But when we want to talk about eternity, we want to talk about people's relationship with God, we want to talk about people being accountable for what they do in their life, you might not have very many friends. Because people don't like to talk about that. But your purpose, what's your purpose? To show people Jesus. To teach people about Jesus. So that they can claim their place in God's family. Don't we want people in our family? Okay, let's don't use our earthly family, okay? <laughs> let's use our global family. The one God designed, not the one human beings have messed up. You see, every family has a story. <coughs> let's talk about that family. Who do you want to leave behind? When the time comes when Jesus returns, and we'll all be raised from the dead no matter what form we're in, no matter where our ashes have been poured, or what creek we've been laying in, or what hole we've been dug and put in, when we're raised, when we raise in the second coming, who's going to be left behind? Who do you want left behind? Anybody? You see, your purpose is to share the love of God with all people. So that when God comes again, when Jesus comes again, we're all called up. And eternity is this glorious celebration of who God is and the work that God's done. And we as children of God can gather as a family. We can gather as a family. And we can see that you're there because somebody else shared the witness with you. Or you're there because somebody else shared a witness with you. And we can celebrate in the goodness of God. That we heard God's call. And God called us children because we heard the call. And God received us in love no matter what our sin may be. <coughs> there are a lot of people in the world who disqualify themselves from Jesus because they think their sin is too bad. And God put you on earth to be a vessel to that person to say, God is bigger than you. God wants you as part of the family. God doesn't care what your color of skin is. God doesn't care what grade you're in. God doesn't care what your marital relationship is. God's not going to judge you like that. God wants to love you. 
But God can't love you if you don't come to God. Did you hear me? God can't love you if you can't come to God. The scripture is one of the greatest celebratory scriptures that's written. John is celebrating the goodness of God and the goodness that God has for God's people. That God wants to give us that love. God wants to give us that love. But you know what we want to do? We want to kick life back to the old times. When we didn't have to be accountable. We didn't have to think about witnessing about Jesus. We could just be innocent. And life was good back then. Life wasn't hard. We didn't lose loved ones. We're not going back there. God doesn't want us to go back there. God wants us to mature in our faith and walk with him side by side. There's a reason Nicky Mouse Club doesn't play on TV today. It's not relevant. Our world isn't good. Doesn't have that good image anymore. Our world's tough. And our world needs Jesus. But God needs you. God needs you to claim your sonship or your daughtership. God needs you to claim your purpose in life. Because the real children of God, they speak of the Creator. They talk about the goodness of Jesus. Their life emulates who Jesus was without ever preaching a word. They don't judge people. They help people. They love people. And they claim God as their God. The head of their family. And every one of you have claimed Christ as your Savior. It's time for us to move on into the intimacy with God. To accept that we are God's child. And that God is transforming me. God is transforming you. God is transforming each and every one of us. It's not complete and won't be complete till we get to heaven. But let's be a part of the transformation. Let's walk in the process. One of the greatest things I got to teach my son was... He went from running five events in high school to competing in an event that had ten different events in it over two days. So he had to learn several new events. I mean, he had never pole vaulted a day before he went to the University of Texas. He had never done, he had never thrown the shot or the discus or any of that stuff. And he had ten events he had to learn before he could be competitive. The conversation we had week after week when we talked about what his scores and his techniques look like, it's a process. Son, it's a process. Son, it's a process. Embrace the process. Sure, you can only pull up 12 feet. Embrace the process. Embrace the process. It'll be this year, and then next year, and then the next year, and then the next year. Embrace the process. Isn't that what we need to do in our spiritual journey? God moves us to understanding who the Christ is, and we give our life to Christ, but then it becomes that we have to live for Christ. What does that look like? And then we read more about that, we study more about that, we have to change some things, like our language needs to be like our like language, not cursing and all that kind of stuff. And we have to treat people fair. What? We can't have it my way, like Elvis used to say. We have to do it so everybody else can have their way. We have to be servants to others. Are you kidding me? What does that mean? How do I serve others? We learn that. It's a process. Right? It's a process that God works in us so that one day when we meet in eternity with all the others, we can celebrate the transformation. That people can look at you and they can say, you know what, I see Christ in that person. I want to know what that person has. It happens all the time. It happens all the time in witnesses around the world where somebody sees somebody else and they say, what do you have? What is it about your life that makes you so special? Why do you have so much joy? Because they know who God is. And they're living into the transformation that God's doing in their life. He went from pole vaulting 12 feet to almost pole vaulting 17 feet in four years. That's a process. God does the same thing in us. Can we not claim our sonship or our daughtership? Can we put away the jingles from the past in our life, the bygone days, and let them be buried? And let's move into the newness of what God has for us. Let us move into the new day that God is calling us to. Let us be intimate with God as we share who the Christ is in our life with those around us. And then let us trust the Holy Spirit to work wherever we are. God is good. 
And God will go with us wherever, wherever we are. Let us be the children of God that God has called us to be. And may he stamp eternity on our eyes. Amen. And amen. amen. Now counts for.